My name is Dan Horan, and this is A Friar Life. While there are many common aspects of living the life of a Franciscan friar, there is hardly a blueprint to follow. Called to live the gospel of Jesus Christ in the way of St. Francis, no two lives are the same. This is A Friar Life. Thank you. Same to you. Now, which one's Father Zach? Which one's Joe? I can't can't tell apart on the phone. Okay. Hi. How's it going, guys? You know, the writing the writing of books. I think it just began with uh, one article, one idea that I had that I wrote down and shared, and it was published about ten years ago. And subsequently, that was just uh, something that kind of snowballed into a, a practice and a part of my life both in a popular sense, but also academically contributing to a theological and spiritual conversation that was on, ongoing and unfolding. There's almost nothing I'd rather talk about, so this is perfect. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I, I like to say that uh, my interest in Merton began as a hobby that grew out of control. So I started reading him uh, for my own kind of personal prayer life and spiritual development. Uh, I didn't know much about Merton until I went off to college and uh, was introduced to him there as it happened where I went to school, St. Bonaventure University, is a place where Merton taught for three semesters. So I guess you could say I was kind of haunted by his ghost or something, by the spirit of Merton. Yeah, not too bad. Um, um, and with the speaking uh, and the traveling, that's something really not of my making. It's, it's really very humbling because the requests come from without. There's an invitation, could you come and talk about this? Or would you be willing to lead a retreat on this subject? And so um, in those ways, it's a matter of really discerning you know, is this something that aligns well with, uh, with, with my ministry, with my time, with my vocation? Uh, when those things kind of align, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to do that. Sort of like uh, elite runners, there are other levels. So there's the elite, the sub-elite, and the sub-sub-elite. There's no such thing as the sub-sub-elite, but that's the equivalent. I, if there is such thing as Catholic celebrities, there's celebrity, sub-celebrity, I'm like beneath that. So. Um, but it's true that I get invited a lot to speak, um, to, to lead retreats, to give lectures, to preach, and uh, it's, it's really wonderful. It's, it's a part, I think, of the Franciscan charism of, of preaching the Word of God in a popular way that reaches as wide an audience as possible, and uh, I feel it's a great honor and a great part of uh, you know, my ministry and my calling to, to be able to do that. The way I understand my vocation is really like a pie that has three parts, and they're relatively even though not exactly. It depends on the year and the day and the time. Uh, the first part is sacramental ministry, uh, the ministry of being a ministerial priest, the celebrating the sacraments, celebrating the liturgy. Uh, another third of that pie is popular preaching, uh, and that includes writing, speaking, leading retreats. And another third is the academic stuff, which is academic conferences and writing kind of academic books and teaching in the classroom. Uh, and I think that the traveling for those latter two parts in particular uh, ties into the Franciscan tradition really well. Francis wanted us to be itinerant. And I always joke, somebody has to go out there and be itinerant when so many friars stay at home so often. Doing good work, of course, but, uh, but it's a different calling and a different aspect of our charism. So uh, I feel like they all kind of come together in a, in a uniquely Franciscan way. Instead of speaking and writing up there like I typically do, I put this stuff up there because we're gonna be going back and forth <clears> among <throat> these figures, and I think it's really important that you get a sense of the dates and the chronology and uh, in particular, the order, when you see this bracket here, for instance, in Bonaventure and in Thomas, what we see here is infralapsarianism. These are folks that maintain, by and large, the argument that we find in Anselm that we talked about last week. The rest of these characters, though, the remaining four that we're going to take a look at today, uh, you read a little bit about Grossetes, you read a little bit about Scotus, and you read a little bit of Scotus today. Um, Alexander of Hales, we talked about briefly last week when talking about Bonaventure, but I'm going to explain more about him in a moment. And then in this kind of squiggly line thing, we're going to talk about our Dominican cousins. Uh, so th though we are talking about the Franciscan tradition here, we'll look a little bit at the Dominicans. So at the end of the day, we gather together for prayer, uh, and it's the same way we begin each and every day. St. Francis of Assisi told us friars that we are to live uh, a life that is, prioritizes the spirit of prayer and devotion 
And so in addition to sharing meals together and occasionally ministering and working beside one another, uh, we begin and end each day praying the Liturgy of the Hours, which is the prayer of the church, the ancient Psalms, the reflections on the readings, and uh, prayers of intercession for those who have asked for us to keep them in prayer and for our own uh, needs and requests and spirits of thanksgiving as well. Like our prayer life, uh, most days we come together not only to pray and worship the Lord, but to uh, break bread together, to eat, and uh, that's one of the ways in which we share our fraternity, catch up on the day, get to know one another, tease one another, laugh, and have a good time, and uh, it's a major part of our fraternal life. That's a great house to live in, uh, and I'm grateful to live with these brothers, uh, and uh, we never have a bad meal. Uh, why do I, I run? I, I love it. I, what I did in high school is my sport. I don't really like sports that involve uh, a lot of extra things like balls or sticks or that kind of thing. And so I, I like to run, I like to bike, I like to swim. Uh, it clears my mind, uh, um, it's, it's fun, uh, it relaxes me, and uh, I guess it's a good way to stay healthy. So uh, that's a good reason too, although uh, I enjoy the, the competition of it too. So uh, yeah, I love running. I've only done one marathon so far. I've, I, for the longest time, I like to say that I'm only half crazy. So uh, 10Ks, 15Ks, lots and lots and lots of 5Ks. Uh, but I've got another marathon coming up this summer and uh, I plan to keep doing them as long as I can because I really do like it. Ha, ha, ha. 